Hi there, hope you're having a lovely day. Well, let's face it, life is just a little bit stressful at the moment. And there are a lot of outside forces that we can't control at the moment, COVID-19 just being one of them. One thing for sure that we can control is our internal world and how we are reacting to everything. So today we're going to be sharing some meditation and breathing tips to help ease some of the anxiety that you may be feeling due to COVID-19 and will enhance your everyday life. Now meditation, what's your th thoughts on it? You know, for many people, it's just one of those things that we hear and speak about um, and, and don't really know a great deal about. However, if, you, if we really did know and understand the benefits that it gives us, I'm sure each one of us really would be practicing it every single day. So have, have you ever heard of the saying, work smarter, not harder? Well, meditation can actually help you do that and enhance the overall quality of your life so you can be happier, healthier, and the best version um, of yourself, your children, your family, your friends, uh, especially during this pandemic. So today we are joined by our very special guest, Kim Norton, founder of Rainbow Light Therapies. Now, Kim is a hol holistic counsellor specialising in stress and anxiety management for children, teens and adults. Isn't that perfect for what we're going through at the moment? Kim? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Kim provides a unique and intuitive and individualized therapy approach to stress anxiety management through individual, small group and family sessions um, and began doing so after her son, son's autism diagnosis in 2007. And she also works with special needs kids, their families through the NDIS and is just an all round beautiful and fantastic human being. How are you doing, first of all? Thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you for having me. Yes, everything's fine here. We, we're uh, getting through, just like everybody else. I think everyone is scrambling a little bit to sort of find a new normal, but uh, we just do what we can. Yeah. Yes. And I'm sure the information you're going to share today is going to help and make a difference to lots of families' lives. So to begin with, there's two different articles that we published of yours um, that are interconnected. Um, one is called Just Breathe. And the other one is called Om Meditation for Stress Management. So we've got a series of questions that we're going to ask you today. But before we get stuck into them, could you give us a little bit of an overview of both of those articles and just what inspired you to write them? Sure. Okay. So Om Meditations for Stress Management is an article I wrote um, about some mindfulness activities, some guided meditations and mandala colouring. Uh, just three really easy techniques for people to use uh, and people of all ages to use just to help quieten the mind and and practice meditation. So with meditation, you don't have to be sitting in the corner of the room in the lotus position in your designer loungewear, you know, chanting OM to <laughs> meditate. That's not what it's about. We're all busy. We've all got a hundred things to do. And um, I'm very much into um, giving people strategies to use in their everyday life that can fit in in one minute, five minutes, an hour, whatever it is they need. Yeah, and from lots of the families, the interviews that we've been doing um, over the, the last couple of weeks, um, what I'm hearing um, constantly is about having structure in our day so we can ensure that we are sort of, you know, getting through um, our work day, our family life, you know, keeping the kids balanced, um, and all of those things. So I am thinking outside the box and thinking in the sense that, well, if we're gonna have structure, but blocking out some time for everyone to be able to have some stress management in their day is quite vital at the moment, would you say? It is, it is. And it's exactly what I'm doing with my clients um, with the online sessions at the moment. We are coming up with daily schedules and routines and we're just taking it day by day. And in those daily schedules, we are allotting time for things like meditation. Yeah. And especially for the kids. Yep, definitely. Yeah. Well, as I said earlier on, meditation is something that we everyone hears about. Um, it's obviously been around for eons in um, a lot of uh, it's in Eastern cultures and that sort of stuff. But as an introduction, let's let's take it that no one um, really knows the details and the benefits of it. So let's just get stuck into the questions first. So number one, the first question we have is, what is meditation and how can it help um, during this time? Okay, so meditation is simply just being engaged with, becoming engaged with your thoughts and feelings as they come up and acknowledging them without judgment. That's the best way I can explain it. So it's just quietening the mind, quietening down all the mind chatter, 
allowing what is there to come up. So all of those thoughts and feelings that we might not always like to deal with, um, acknowledging them and then sending them on their way again. Okay, and that can be done in as little as one minute and right up to you know an hour or two hours depending on the person and what they like to do and different visualization techniques can help with that okay the benefits are that it does lower your stress levels okay and at this time when we are facing COVID-19 and what is going on we, we do know and research does show that stress lowers our immunity and lowers our immune system so meditation is a stress uh, it is just a tool for managing stress. And so it can only help. It can't hurt you. It doesn't cost anything except a couple of minutes of your time. So why not give it a go? Um, and as you mentioned before, it is, meditation isn't um, that you have to be sat in the lotus position and on a yoga mat, um, yep. all of those types of things. Meditation can also sort of be the, in our daily practice as we're washing the dishes and those types of things as well. Is that yep. correct? Definitely, definitely. Um, I think uh, that's some of the some of the best times uh, to do meditation when you can just let your mind wander, um, and that's simply all all it is doing. You can do it in, in as easy as one minute whilst you're washing the dishes or cleaning the toilet or doing those mundane jobs. We, you you would remember. Um, I know I'm old enough to remember, and maybe you are, Rachel, <laughs> when we used to sit on the phone uh, at the kitchen table. You know, when the phone used to be attached to the wall. And you couldn't walk around the house. You couldn't multitask. You would just sit there and you would, you would scribble and you would doodle and you would colour in. That it was a type of mindfulness exercise. You would often look down at the piece of paper and wonder, oh, you know, where did that come from? Or what does that mean? Or, um, so that's, that's a perfect example of just being mindful. Okay. Which is so, sort of well, and, and that leads to the next question. What is mindfulness? And what is the difference between mindfulness and meditation? Okay. Well, mindfulness is... A type of meditation okay mindfulness is simply being in the moment and that's it nothing else not worrying about what's going to happen next or not worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow what's going to happen in five minutes time just being totally engaged with what's happening in that very minute okay whereas meditation there are other types of meditations that can take you off where you start to think about what's going to happen next or tomorrow or the day after and you meditate on that Mindfulness is simply what is in that specific moment. In that moment. So you're yeah. saying, uh, would you suggest that at, at this time that people should be doing a combination of the two intertwined? Yes, yeah, definitely. Because mindfulness is great. It's a wonderful tool and I use it with my clients. I use it in conjunction with other meditations. Um, I think sometimes the word mindfulness can get bandied around a little bit as some sort of new age, you know, woo-woo type of thing which it's not when mindfulness is practiced correctly we do still deal with the issues that might come up during that mindfulness session um, which is really important to remember and it's not just something that you use just so that you forget about everything that's going on around you and i guess well you know for a lot of people that are going through high stress during during this time which can be a whole wide range of different things they may just think, well, meditation is, is, is not ideal because they're going to be sat still. And like you said, all of those thoughts are going to sort of be rushing to the <laughs> to their mind as well. So, but they always say, and, 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 and tell me if I'm wrong, that, that during these times is when you need it the most. It's definitely the time we need it the most because it does lower your stress levels, okay? Yeah. So the more you ignore certain thoughts or feelings and the more you push them down or push them away, um, they'll come up somewhere or another, somehow or another <laughs> in some shape or form. It might affect your sleep. You might not be sleeping properly. It might affect your eating habits. Um, it can lead to all sorts of, uh, you know, addictions um, from watching net, you know, binge watching Netflix to drinking alcohol, drugs. It doesn't have to be, you know, that extreme. But we have gym junkies as well. That's another type of addiction. So if we don't deal with what is going on in ourselves, it will come out somehow or another. Yeah. Well, let's get stuck into some more information. So in the um, meditation article, you give us three examples um, and would love for you to elaborate. Now, which ones are best for adults and which ones are best for children? And okay, so there them. are... Yes, definitely. So there's mindfulness activities and there are some wonderful mindfulness activities for all ages but particularly ones for kids. 
um, and younger kids at this at this time who might not have the understanding or the comprehension that some of the older kids do. So there's some wonderful mindfulness games. Even playing I Spy is a type of mindfulness and a mindfulness game. Okay. We're not doing too many car trips at the moment and we're sort of stuck at home. But you, you, one of the games that I spoke about in another article was um, where, you know, I Spy with a Twist, where you might be sitting in the lounge room and you get your child to describe something that's in their, an item that's in their bedroom and you have to guess what that item is. Mm -hmm. That's a simple mindfulness activity, okay? Um, mindfulness activities for adults is simply, can we just stop and concentrating on your breath and just breathe for a minute, that's it. Just don't think of anything else, but just concentrate on your breath. And every time your mind starts to wander and you start to think about what you're gonna have for dinner or have you defrosted that meat or I didn't tell Auntie May about you know, whatever's gonna to happen tomorrow, just come back to your breath and just concentrate on your breath. And that's one minute. That's a one minute meditation or a one minute breathing exercise or a mindfulness activity. So mindfulness so means maintaining I guess a moment by moment awareness of our thoughts yes. and feelings and our body sensations and surrounding, but it's with yep. a gentle nurturing lens. So it's really what's happening around us and how we're feeling yep. about it. Would that be the best way to, to describe it? Yep. That's a good way to describe it too. Yes, definitely. Okay. So, There's also guided meditations for all ages and there are so many on YouTube that are for free. You don't have to go paying people lots of money or doing fancy classes. They all vary in lengths. Um, there's some on my YouTube channel that I've recorded. There's scripts on my website. For kids, I really like Jason Stevenson as well. He's got that wonderful voice and has some wonderful meditations. Uh, Cosmic Kids Yoga on YouTube and web also have some wonderful mindfulness meditations for kids and some um, shorter, uh, it's, yeah, sort of shorter guided meditations as well. So there's lots out there. You just have to find the voice that you like. Yeah, and the tone. But sometimes there can be some really wonderful meditations, but the voice is just doesn't agree with you, and that's fine. So just have a look, have a play, and see what works for you and the kids. Uh, Jason Stevenson also has some wonderful adult ones as well. He has them on every topic you can imagine. Highly recommend him. Mm -hmm. um, guided meditations are not; um, they can be for relaxation. They can be for sleep. They can be for studying for exams. There are some for chakra balancing. There are some for um, all a range of a range of topics. So have a look. Um, have a look at Jason Stevenson and see what you think of his. Cool. Highly recommend. Yep. And Mandela coloring. There's a reason that those coloring books took off and you know did a wonderful. They, had, they did have a long long reign. The coloring books, which and there's a good reason for them because we do like to lose ourselves in something that we like doing okay and when you're coloring in and your mind starts to wander that is a type of meditation yeah put on some relaxation music grab those colored textures start coloring don't worry about what color you're using don't worry about the strokes that you're using just relax and do it and that is a type of meditation as well so the um the health benefits with uh, mindfulness i guess can sort of help relieve stress um, can help treat heart disease, lower blood pressure, reduce uh, chronic pain as well, I believe. Um, as you mentioned yes. before, so it can help improve sleep and um, help alleviate any gas gastrointestinal difficulties, which would be as a result of thinking and stress at the moment. So there's lots of health. Yes, yes. definitely. Because yeah. most of us carry our stress in that solar plexus area or the stomach area, okay? Um, especially if you're a little bit empathic, um, that's where we, we hold everything. So anything that you can do to relieve that stress is going to stop the stress coming out in a physical form. Yes. Well, let's get stuck into the next question. How can breathing exercises or breath work affect our stress levels? Okay, well, when we're stressed, one of the first things that happens is our heart rate increases. and if we lower the heart rate, we also lower the stress levels, okay? Especially at the moment with this COVID-19, there's um, some research that's being done and I know everything's so new with this and no one really knows what they're talking about with the COVID-19 as yet, I don't believe. But anyway, there's because it's a respiratory condition, the, the more that we can keep those lungs open 
at working to their optimum, it can only help. Okay, so a little bit of uh, breathing exercises, breath work, anything to keep those lungs moving and at their healthiest, I think is, is definitely going to help with that as well as the stress levels. Well, that's going to go straight into our next question. Can you give us some examples of some breathing exercises? Sure. So some really simple breathing exercises. The one that I, I spoke about before was the one-minute meditation. So just counting your breath for one minute. So you just breathe in, one, breathe out, then breathe in, two, breathe out, and do that for a minute. So for you should get about 16 breaths um, for an adult and a little bit more depending on the age of the child and the age of the teenager. Um, other breathing exercises, there's a lot out there, but box breathing is another popular one with the kids because they can visually see a box and they can breathe in, hold, breathe out, release, breathe in, hold, breathe out, release. Yeah, four counts or how were the three counts for you? Depending, yeah, depending on the age. So if you're looking at, you know, sort of six, seven, eight-year-olds, you can start off with the four count breathing. If they're a little bit younger, when their lungs are a little bit smaller. Breathe in. And breathe in. For four. And then hold for the count of four. Yep. Yep. And breathe out for the count of four. And then yep. wait for the count of four. Okay. And then breathe in for the count of four. Breathe yep. out for the count of four. Breathe and then in your, is it breathe in? Is it hold, hold. breathe out? And then hold or wait. Yeah. For our younger kids, like the, the, the toddlers, you can do it for the count of three. Yep. Yeah. And for the adults, we can do, you know, start off with four, five, six, depending on how confident they are at their breathing. Then we build up to four, seven, eight. The longer the exhale, the the better quality of breath work we're doing. But to start off with, starting off with anything is better than nothing. So if you start off with four count breathing, that's perfect. And what's belly breathing, which you mentioned in the article also? Yeah, so belly breathing is breathing, bypassing the lungs and breathing into our bellies. So if you put one hand on your heart and one hand on your stomach or your solar plexus, when you breathe, you'll naturally feel your chest going in and out as you breathe. And what we want to do is bypass the chest and breathe into the belly. So when we breathe in or when we inhale, the belly goes out. And when we exhale, the belly goes in. And it's difficult to do at first because your brain tries to make you do it the other way. And so if you give that a go, and you'll see. Can you place like books or something onto kids' stomachs to be able to help them with yeah. belly breathing? Yep, so teaching our kid to belly breathe. Some of our younger kids will already be doing it because we are born that way, belly breathing. It's just over time that we start to do that shallow breathing and breathing into our lungs rather than our bellies. So to start off with, the kids can lay on the floor and definitely they can put a book on their chest and then they can see the breathing rather than just feel it. Yes. Yep. So with that, how can we teach our kids to meditate? What's the, the best way to, to get them um, introduced to it if they haven't already been exposed to it? Just show them. Do it with them. Yeah. A lot some time for it to happen every day. There's a joke in my house here. If it's on the calendar, it has to happen. <laughs> so there's a schedule, there's a calendar. It's like it's, it's on there, so that's happening today. Do it with them. Show them a few different types. Show them how to do it and make it fun. Yeah, so this is where the, the, those wonderful... Sites like Cosmic Kids Yoga and um, my YouTube channel <laughs> um, come in handy because it's all there for you and it's free. Yeah. So it, it, the health benefits outweigh any other any other concerns you have with time or they might not like it or just do it. Give it a go. Yeah. And what are some mindfulness activities that parents can be doing with their kids at home at the moment? Well, they've, they've got all the time in the world at the moment. <laughs> so there's no excuse not to sit down and do some mindfulness. You can do mindfulness eating. You can do mindfulness drawing, like the colouring in. Mindfulness eating, you know, grab a piece of fruit, take a bite. What does that taste like? Can you feel the juice dripping down your chin? What does it feel like in your mouth? That's about all staying in that moment. Another one that you might have seen around is the five, four, three, two, one, where you say, you ask the child, you know, tell me five things you can see, 
four things you can smell, three things you can taste, you use the five senses and it just keeps them in that moment. You know, for a couple of minutes anyway, it keeps them in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot, you just use your imagination and make it fun, make a game out of it. Yeah. Um, and I mean, are you finding with the, um, the clients and the families that you're working with at the moment that, um, it's, it's, this is that they, they've had a greater need, um, for, for mindfulness meditation and for your services at the moment. And what's been the, the shift and the change that you've seen in the last few weeks? Yeah, sure. So most well, all of my sessions are online now. So I'm doing a lot of, um, guided meditations and these sorts of mindful ex activities and breathing exercises and breath work online. And a lot of the kids are really relating to that really well because that's their world. Most of them are on iPads and laptops and computers and whatnot most of the time anyway. Um, so it is working really well and it's um, empowering them, which is what it's all about. It's not always up to the parent and shouldn't always be up to the parent because we have to teach our kids how to manage their own stress and anxiety when to know that they are stressed or anxious so that they can do use all these wonderful strategies as well. So they can see the difference when they are stressed as opposed to when they are calm. After meditation, they feel calm and that's the way we want them to feel as much of the time as they can. And that's teaching them how they feel and what it feels like to be calm. And look, there's going to be lots of families that um, are now going to try mindfulness and meditation for, for the first time, um, where would you say that they would start? What's the first thing that they can do today um, and then sort of start to build on it? What's your recommendation with that? Those simple games like I Spy, okay? With the younger kids, start off with those really fun games. So you, it's, it's therapy, it's meditation without them even realising that they're doing it. If you say, come and sit down with me, we're going to meditate, you're going to get the eye rolls and the, I don't want to do that, I want to play on my iPad or I want to go outside. If you say, come and sit down, we're going to play a game, you're much more likely to engage them in the activity than not, okay? So those simple games like the I Spy with the twist, you know, you, you get them to describe something in, that's in their bedroom and you have to guess what it is. And then swap. Another one is, you know, put a blindfold on one of you and the other person has to describe an item to you that they're holding in their hand. It can be something in the same room. So just make up the rules as you go and just have fun with it and make a game out of it for our younger kids. For the older kids, they might be more inclined to sit down and do a little bit of that breath work. Um, you can still make it fun. Kids love competition too, especially if they've got siblings. <laughs> so offer some, some prizes and some rewards. And, you know, if we do this, then we're going to go and do that. Or if we do this, then we can have that ice cream or whatever it is that is relevant to them. And how much time for beginners would you say that they should be allocating to these exercises each day now? Okay, I think everyone should be meditating every day to some extent. Even if you start off with once a day, just doing that one game or one minute meditation. It's one minute out of a whole day, yeah? That's all it takes, it's one minute, yeah? There's no excuse not to do it, especially now when we have all this extra time on our hands at home yep yeah and um the other question i was going to ask also is that, that many families um and parents that uh, may be starting to do meditation and uh, mindfulness for the first time um as i mentioned earlier are going to have all kinds of thoughts rising to the surface how they're feeling and everything else what what would be your your advice for how to deal with those thoughts and everything else um, as they arise that could be all stress related with regards to everything that's happening at the moment, be it from jobs, money, um, everyone being at home in isolation. There's going to be a whole gamut of things, but how how do they how do they deal with them as they are practicing meditation, but they do rise to the surface? Okay, so. The idea is that we let these thoughts and feelings come up without judgment, okay? Without judgment means that we, we don't place judgment on them. So they're not good or bad. They're not negative or positive. They're, they're, they're thoughts and feelings, okay? Obviously, there's a whole range of things I would do with a client in that respect. Um, and that, you know, that's because that's what I do. So there'd be, with kids, I do things like affirmation jars and uh, starting journals and uh, writing down... You know, thoughts of gratitude in some shape or form and concentrating on the positive to a certain extent. 
yeah, we're not magic and we can't be in the positive all the time because things are going to happen that aren't that good. So what we do is just try and reframe it a little bit and just try and make it a little bit more positive or a little bit less stressful. With the kids at the moment, I can't stress enough that we need to tell them the truth and we need to be honest with them, obviously with age appropriate language. Yep. But, um, you know, I've had parents tell me that they've, you know, they told their child that it's just the flu and it's okay and it doesn't matter and it's all good. But what happens at the end of winter, you know, this winter or next winter if the parent gets the flu or Auntie May gets the flu, how is that child going to react then? Yep. So we do need to tell the truth. We need to validate their feelings. Okay, if they're worried, if they're stressed, that's okay. And we need to help them unpack it. Okay, and that's where someone like me comes in because that's what I help you do. Um, but I think from a, a initial perspective, just be honest okay, and validate their feelings. Yeah. So if you were to um, summarise all of the, the beautiful stuff we've spoken about today, um, how would you summarise um, what parents should be doing um, and, and the benefits in it and where do they start? Okay, so start simple. Start making it part of your routine. Put it into your daily schedule. Make it fun, okay? It's going to help lower your stress levels. It's going to help improve your immunity. And it's also going to bring you closer together, especially if you do it as a family or as a parent and child. And just do it. <laughs> really simply, just do it. That's it. Yeah. And like we said at the start, it's one of those things, until you start doing it and you feel the benefits and, and you realise how much there is to gain from doing this, um, it's one of those things you have to just give it a go. Um, and then... You do. And as you were saying before about the gym junkies becoming addicted to, to that level of um, endorphin release, then it's almost like your body will equally become addicted to having this level of peacefulness within you, which is something which is critically important at the moment. And let's face it, doing this is absolutely free. So, and, and, and as we said earlier, it's only going to make us um, sort of be more, more present and, and helpful and loving for, for all the people around us, especially our kids. Exactly. So grateful for your time. If parents have got more information, um, uh, so want more information from you, oh, they've got questions, where can they find you? Okay, so you can contact me through Kidopedia, of course, um, or you can uh, look me up on my website at www.rainbowlighttherapies.com.au. There's also a YouTube channel that I have with lots of different meditations on there as well for all ages, and also on Facebook and Instagram. Wonderful. So grateful for your time. I'm um, absolutely honoured to have the chat and we'll speak to you soon. Take care. Thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. Bye.